My name is JD Renault. I'm a comedian sometimes and a writer, I guess. But what you might also not know about me is that sometimes I make pictures. Now, what I've decided to do over the past couple months is destroy all my old movie posters and recompose them as abstract pieces. Uh, I call them one sheets, uh, mainly because I think that's a snappy title, and because decoupage copyright infringement is a little bit too wordy. Now, basically, what I do is I take a piece of classic uh, film imagery, such as this, and I turn it into this. Now, I uh, I like the dog. Anyway. People have been asking how I actually come about to make these things, and it's actually quite simple. And since I believe art to be a weird democracy in which anybody can do it, despite how talented or untalented they are, I've decided to make this video and show you exactly how I do it. Get down, get down, get down. First of all, let's just go over your basic materials. Brushes. Various brushes of different sizes and shapes. Any one you find that works for you is probably the best. You'll need some kind of paste. I use Americana Decoupage Gloss. You could use Mod Podge, they're kind of more popular. This one is a dollar cheaper at Michael's and it literally doesn't matter. Next, get a squeegee, a very small rubber squeegee. Mod Podge usually makes these ones too, it helps with applying things to the canvas a little easier. Then, rulers, straight lines. Clear rulers, different sizes, different thicks and different widths. Now, these are optional, these are hole punches. You can find these in usually the craft section. These ones are Martha Stewart, magnetized, just punch them in like that. These are Fiskars, they're squeeze ones. Other than that, you are also going to need an X-Acto knife, preferably one with a good little rubbery handle and something sharp, sharp, sharp as hell. You'll need a pair of crappy scissors, a pair of scissors that you will be using to cut that might actually have glue on them so you don't actually hold it too close to your heart. And most importantly of all, you're going to need some B-Softs, or otherwise known as big shiny off scissors. Big ones that you'll be using to make large cuts on your very first process. Now, most of the one sheets I make are made out of old film posters, which traditionally measure about 27 inches across and 40 inches in length. So I make them on a canvas that's 16 by 20. And this is usually good enough. I mean, you're going to be getting rid of a lot of excess in the poster. There's going to be a lot of overlapping, so you will need a smaller canvas for the size of a traditional movie poster. But today, I'm actually going to be using a 30 inch by 40 inch canvas for a gigantic wall size poster of this motherfucker. <laughs> Look at it. Look at it a lot. Because what you need to do is analyze this and figure out what kind of image you can turn this into. And for me, I don't really like if I can make these if it's immediately recognizable right off the hop what it is. And the first way you know someone can do that is if the title is visible, if names and text are visible, and if really iconic imagery associated with the poster is still as prominent as it was in the original poster. So what do we have to get rid of, or be creative with, to make sure that people don't immediately see this thing? Pulp Fiction posters are going to cut up. So what does that leave us with? We've got Big Uma Thurman in the foreground here, and we could possibly cut up Pulp Fiction and the red here. So we've got red and yellow, along with the available middle ground imagery here. We're going to take the main image here, cut it up into smaller pieces, kind of assemble it in a stained glass sort of fashion, and then between each piece we're going to weave in the red and the yellow from Pulp Fiction in here to create sort of a mosaic stained glass type of piece. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to chop up Uma Thurman here into basically triangles, rectangles, hexagons, whatever shapes I want that will be arranged on top of the canvas uh, in a stained glass sort of pattern. And there we have it. Phase one is done. Uma Thurman has been thoroughly destroyed. Now we have only the letters and the yellow and the red to get through, but it is really freaking late, so I'm gonna go to bed. Good morning. F relatively. So, phase one, destroy Uma Thurman, complete. Phase two, turn the names in the sidebar into workable little strips. All right, so after about an entire day worth of cutting, I now have all of the poster disassembled into workable bits. This is Destroyed Uma, these are the titles, this is all of the black, or black with small scratches that was in the entire poster, which is quite a lot. And this was all the title, the red and yellow of Pulp Fiction. Over here is some of the remainders and things that I'll probably be using for things to add final touches. And over here are all the credits, which I probably won't be using. 
Now you may have noticed that I didn't actually cut up all of Uma Thurman over here. In fact, it's quite a large piece that I left uncut. That's because if this is not enough to cover the whole surface area, which it probably won't be, I may actually need pieces to be specific shapes to fill in those holes. That's why I have this one to create specific shapes out of to fill in those holes. So thus concludes phase one of the one sheet process, which is what I like to call the harvest. Actually getting all the pieces out so you can actually use them and put the puzzle pieces back together and create something new. The second phase is the important one, where you actually start putting glue on stuff and applying it to a canvas. Phase one of looking at stuff and rearranging it on other things has given me this. So, this is basically all of the Uma Thurman bits just sort of laid out on top of the canvas just to give me an idea of how much space I've got. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of distance in between each little bit. Now, these will, of course, be closer together, and those gaps will be filled in with the black, yellow, and red little strips. I may even have to make them even thinner now that I'm looking at how much distance I have in here. Good news is, is that I actually have quite a bit left over from the original harvest, and I still have that big piece of Uma Thurman's head that I can chop up if I need to. That's one of the weirdest sentences I've ever said. Big ass canvas is now in place. We're about ready to begin. So like I said, you are gonna get some kind of sealer, uh, any kind of decoupage or, you know, sealing type of finish. Important thing to make note of is gloss. You wanna make sure whatever kind you get is gloss. There's gloss finish and matte finish. Matte finish is a bit of a pain in the ass with dealing with something like this. Gloss finish is gonna take your weird imperfections and kinda of smooth them out, make them shinier. If there's a little bit too much on one, you just sort of smooth it out and it's not gonna leave a weird chalky residue. Matte finish doesn't really work with already glossy materials, I find, because it gives it this weird little sheen. These are things that literally only I care about now. Get your brush, lightly dab it on the inside there. Get a good little bit on the edge of your brush right here. Take your piece, thin coat on the back. Nothing too much, nothing too little. Just enough to get a good little base. Find your position, put it on the corner, smooth it out, grab your squeegee, take that, press the corners down, clearing out your bubbles, making sure nothing's poking up. You can smooth it out a little bit with your thumb. It dries pretty fast, about 10, 15 seconds, and there you go. So there you have it, that's how pretty much every piece is applied. Now all you have to do is do that about eight or nine hundred more times and make sure that they don't overlap with one another and the colors are complementary to one another. So I'm gonna go do that now. You won't see me doing it, just imagine what that looks like because this is the part that takes form. F***ing ever. Woo, and it's art now, hooray. Uh, so yeah, that's what that ends up looking like when you do that thing I did a lot. I'm happy with how it's turned out. It just took, as I said, for f***ing ever to do. I needed to use every single piece of uh, Uma Thurman and every piece of non-yellow and red text I could. Uh, let's get in close. <laughs> so. As you can see, every single bit woven in there. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, well first of all, we're gonna go to bed, because I've been up for way too fucking long. But then, when we get up, uh, we are going to weave in to all the little white spots in here, uh, black, yellow, and red from uh, the excess of black that we had in the, in the poster, and the yellow and red in the actual title of Pulp Fiction. But my head right now is a tad bit f***ed because I've been up since 1 o'clock in the morning. It's now forever in the afternoon. Uh, and I don't... Um... Talk to you soon! <laughs> All right, now that we have our main base down, we're gonna cover in all the thin white canvas bits with little tiny black strips. Now we're gonna cover black strips all around the edge, and then in the inside, we're gonna make the thin strips on the inside there uh, red and yellow from the Pulp Fiction. Now, I wanna do that in a circular pattern, so how am I going to create a circular pattern on top of a canvas of a thing I've already made? Simple. Improvise! After a few more days of incredibly tedious work, we now have a border of black around the circular center. 
finishing touches are to fill that in with red and to figure out something to do with the corners. And we have added the yellow that was inside the letters of Pulp Fiction. Stripped them down and made them the border. Do a nice little border of those along the entire edge, covering up our uh, little inconsistencies with black on top of the inside parts. Smooth that out. And we're done. The absolute final step after all is said and done and every piece has been set, you take a big heaping glob of this stuff, smear it over the entire canvas, and then spread it super, super thin. You'll actually definitely need to use your squeegee for this and uh, a bigger, larger brush. Now, you're not even going to be leaving a lot of it on there. It's just to add a top coat. Make sure that everything has a nice, thin film over top of it, making sure that nothing's going to peel up or peel away. and a whole lot of tedious snipping and gluing later, and this is what you end up with. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you've learned a little bit about how I make my beautiful little atrocities, and I'd like to give a little word of advice to all the creative people who may be watching out there. Please, get out there and make whatever the hell you want. Get whatever stupid materials and through whatever messed up means. The world is only going to be a beautiful place if you make it one. So get out there, grab life by its giant dangling cock, or droopy yeah, however you picture life, and just yank it down to your level as hard as you can. Create whatever f***ed up things you can imagine. The world will only get more and more beautiful and disturbing through your proactive methods. I love you all, and good night. It was a teenage magic